This is Ground Affected. My name is your dad, and welcome to being a kid with adult money. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I painted Spider-Man, sculpted by Ed Carvalho 3D on Instagram is where I found this model. Now I would leave a link for this model in the description, but unfortunately I'm not sure there is a link. Just contact the dude on Instagram. I'll leave his Instagram profile in the description if you would like to collect this model for yourself. Before we get on with the video, make sure to leave a like and uh, leave some words in the little square box. Words of encouragement or just words of anything really. Because apparently this is how YouTube dictates whether your video gets seen by more people or not. Of course, if you would like to push the algorithm a little bit further, share the video with your gram. And now let's just get straight into painting the old spotty booby. So as per usual, I start off with a zenith or highlight. I do this by using ink what can't. If you are struggling with ink and it's not going down super smooth, one of the things I've found is to use alcohol. I spray that directly into my airbrush and it somehow makes it a little bit smoother. I don't know why. Over the top of the Zenith or highlight, I'm going to add another ink. And this is going to be a red ink, this time from Vallejo Game Color. I try to spray this as evenly as I possibly can. You don't want to overdo this because you will definitely lose all of that lovely Zenith or contrast that you had created. After I was done with the red, I'm going to paint in the blue and to make this a lot easier and save me a little bit of time, I'm just going to paint this with a brush. Carefully going up to the edges, there are black lining between the colours of this suit, so that kind of helps me not having to worry if the edge is too perfect or not. Although, I'm still going to be careful making sure I get it as tidy as possible. Once I've got this base coat down and it has dried, I'm going to take a lighter blue and I'm going to airbrush that very carefully on a lower pressure with a thinner paint over the top of the blue. This is to create some highlight. Then I'm going to airbrush Old Rust, which is apparently my favourite brown colour, and I'm going to just spray that from the top on the top of the bag, leaving a lot of the black underneath, so you've got some contrast between black and the brown as the highlight. Then for the pedestal that he's standing on, I'm going to use purple, and I'm going to undercoat this from the bottom. This is just basically kind of like getting a bit of light into the model without just using black or anything that's just dark. I'm going to use a bit of purple to create a little bit of depth in it. When that had dried, I sprayed over the top of that with a darkish grey and then I used a slightly lighter grey towards the front. Once all of that had dried, I went back in with a dry brush, a large soft one which I'd stole from my wife and I dry brushed that same light grey over everything and then another layer of a lighter grey over the top of that. I used matte black which is from the Vallejo variety of paints and I painted in the base. I then used Sargor Brown, which is a contrast colour from Games Workshop, and I painted that over the little details on his bag. I guess this is a time you want to be as careful as possible because you don't want to go out the lines now and have to go back and repaint those parts again. That is probably the only downside of an airbrush, is that it's a little bit difficult to recreate the blends that you created in the beginning. It's not impossible, but it is difficult. Now using my favourite brand version, Colour of Brown, I'm going to paint these parts of the straps that you can see on Spidey's bag. This is just going to be a simple one and done coat. This paint is super great for this, I'm not really sure why, but it just goes down really really well and super easy. I'm now going to give a little bit more interest to the base and I'm going to go through and I'm going to paint a wash into the recesses, so only on the panels and on alternating panels on the top of that base. Then it was time to settle down for hours of black lining on Spider-Man's webbing. I take my time with this and I use matte black from Vallejo and I mix this with water. In hindsight, it would have done better to be mixed with a medium or something similar because water just doesn't give you the same flow as a medium does. However, this is totally not impossible. It just takes a bit of time, a little bit of patience and uh, probably a steady hand. Now for the symbol on his base, I'm going to use red pretty much and I'm going to paint the little red spider red because that is the correct color to paint the spider on the base. Although by correct, that is just what I felt was correct. You can use any color you want. I gave this two coats and once I was done with those two coats and they're dried, I gave it an edge highlight of white. 
This is just to create a little bit more interest and make that emblem stand out a bit more. I then painted the cellular mobile communicating device that is on the base of this model. Very carefully, I just painted with the dark silver. Then it was time to work on his eyes. And for this, I'm gonna paint a base coat of white. Because it is thinned down, it's not gonna be pure white. But I'm also gonna use gray, essentially just black mixed into the white to kind of create a little bit of a shadow at the bottom. I'm gonna shape this off and I'm gonna make sure to blend ever so slightly darker edges in the corners and a little bit of a white highlight towards the inner side of the eye. I'm gonna use black to edge off the rest of the eye and that will finish it off very nicely. I'm using Sagor Brown again and I'm gonna go over the edge beading around the straps that are on the straps of his bag. I then paint black over the badges that are attached to his bag and I also paint his symbol on his chest with the same black. I'd also forgot a couple of lines, so it was time to add those lines now. Very carefully, I used the same black to edge the trimming of the suit. This is gonna be something that you will just have to take your time with and do it as carefully as possible, but really, it's there, it's all there for you to follow. Just follow the lumps and bumps on the model. I then painted his boots, which have also got black on them. And I completed the rest of the lines that were on his legs that needed to be painted. Now using Drakenhof Nightshade, I'm going to paint the seams on his pants just to create a little bit more depth and a little bit more interest on his uh, pant balloons. I also created and printed some water slide decals to stick onto the badges and into the phone. I will be releasing a video about this only to my Patreons. It will also be available to anyone who joins as a member on this channel. Now of course that is if I can figure out how to get it to do that, but this video is only for the Patreon. I then put all the parts together of the model and I placed them onto his base. It was also at this time that I realized I could add a little bit more dynamicism into the piece by just giving a little bit of a cable coming out of his headphones. So I placed the headphones over his neck and in order to get that cable to lay a little bit more realistically, I heated it up with my hairdryer and I bent it into place and that is where I called this model done. Hopefully you managed to take something out of this video that will help you painting your own Spider-Man or any models in the future. Now I'd like to speak about something a little bit serious for just a moment and that is I currently am posting two videos a week, once on a Thursday and once on a Sunday. This is going to change going forward from the next year. I'm only going to be posting once a week and if possible I may make a second video however it's only going to be focused on that one video per week. And this is because I am struggling currently to keep up with YouTube as a full-time job as well as being able to keep everything else in my life happening especially since living a life needs money in the form of some kind of wages and unfortunately YouTube does not pay nearly enough to pay my wages. So we're cutting back on one video. Nothing is gonna change other than just one less video a week, but I will be trying to use this time to put a bit more time and effort into the Patreons and extra content over there. So of course, if you wanna get any extra content, the best thing you can do is join the Patreon. And speaking of the Patreons, we managed to get a couple new Patreons this week, and I would like to thank them right now. And that is Rick, and Aaron Burgess. Thank you my dudes, it's because of your guys' assistance and your patronage that these lights can burn marbles and I can continue making these videos. Now we are at the end of a video and this is always my favorite bit. This is where I get to tell you if you didn't like anything you saw in this video, then the best thing you can do for yourself, and probably for me too, is just fuck off. 
I better hurry over to Patreon so I can see how to make those water slide decals. Oh my god!